Hello and welcome back to the Science Corner. Today's video is going to be about the reactions involved in the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And so the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex deals with the converting conversion of pyruvate made from glycolysis into acetyl-CoA. It's a step necessary connecting both glycolysis and the citric acid cycle for aerobic respiration. So here we have the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, also known as PDC, is the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. And with this conversion, we have to transport these mo this molecule into the mitochondrial matrix because that's where the citric acid cycle takes place. While the um, glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. So we have transport proteins that do this and once that transport protein transports pyruvate into the mitochondrial matrix, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, PDC, is there to take it up and do its thing, as you will see. That pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is a very unique enzyme. It's considered one enzyme, but it is a multimer of many, many, many subunits. It's composed of three main different types of subunits, commonly referred to as E1, E2, and E3. The first one is more, is, is more specifically called pyruvate dehydrogenase. The E2 subunit is called dihydrolipoamide acetyltransferase. And E3 is dihydrolipoamide dehydrogenase. The names sound complicated and long, but they do, these names describe exactly what they do. And you will see that with our mechanisms. So just to reiterate, the overall reaction is conversion of pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. We have some, we do a re reduction here. So we pick up some electrons on the NAD+, our electron carrier. And of course, we have to add coenzyme A to our reaction in order for it to get it added to the acetyl group. And we give off some carbon dioxide in the process. There are five essential coenzymes needed for this enzyme prompt complex to, to work properly. And they are thymine pyrophosphate, or TPP, NAD+, FAD+, coenzyme A, and lipoic acid. You will see in, when we go over the enzyme mechanisms involved in each of the subunits, how each one of these plays a vital role in the conversion of pyruvate into acetic, acetyl-CoA. Another distinguishing feature about this enzyme complex is just its sheer size. It's, this complex is 9.5 million Daltons in size. Again, one Dalton is, is, is um, equivalent to one gram per mole so it's essentially 9.5 times 10 to the 6 grams per mole. That's its, that's its molecular size, weight, it's massive. Each complex is composed um, about 30 E1, 60 E2, and 12 homodimers of E3. So it's essentially 24 E3s. With this enzyme complex's complexity, it's architecturally beautiful, if I may say so myself. Um, here's a ribbon diagram il uh, illustrating the PDC. Um, and just so you can kind of get an, get an understanding of um, how each of these sub, where each of these subunits are localized and how, how they are organized. Here's a schematic showing you E1s, which are located primarily around the circumference of the complex. And E2s and E3s form a little uh, core in the middle here. And these subunits are organized so that um, the substrate for one enzyme can be passed on to, this product from one enzyme subunit can be passed on to the other, and they're all in relatively close proximity to each other. They don't have to go out of solution and come back into the enzyme. 
So this enzyme is very efficient and fast in that way, being in such, in such close proximity to each other. So let's go over this enzyme mechanism. Before I go over the E1 reaction mechanism, I just want to state again that pyruvate made from glycolysis is transported into the mitochondrial matrix by a separate transporter. The pyruvate is able to get through the, out, get through the outer membrane of the matrix fairly easily because there are non-selective um, transport proteins in the outer membrane, but the inner membrane is much more stringent, but there are specific um, transporters for pyruvate to travel through. I believe it's a um, mediated by an um, electrochemical gradient but I'm not 100% on that. If someone could let me know, that would be great in the comments section. So E1 mechanism. Here, right here in black, is our E, is our TPP, our thiamine pyrophosphate. Uh, it's composed, at least the reactivity, reactive part of the um, coenzyme is this thiazolium ring, which if you look carefully, kind of resembles NAD+, if you remember from when we went over that in glycolysis, during step 6, or reaction 6, we have this positively charged nitrogen, we have a um, conjugated ring here, and so it wants to absorb electron density, we call this an electron sink. And if you notice, on the carbon next to this top positively charged nitrogen, we have a carbon ion. Yes, that is a carbon with free bonds, an extra lone pair of electrons. Extremely unstable, not very common. But the reason this can exist is because it is, its electron density is um, balanced by the electron sink properties of the thiazolium ring itself. This, uh, and this carb anion is very important for getting this reaction started, the reactivity of the thiazolium ring. Mm. So this is what happens, is we have the carb anion, which attacks the relatively nucleophilic, sorry, electrophilic carbonyl group, pushes electrons up onto the oxygen, which picks off a hydrogen from some general base. Well, actually, it turns out this base is attached to the E1 complex as well as the thiazolium ring. So, this brings us down to this step. So now we have the, we have attached our TPP to our pyruvate. With this unstable intermediate, we have our C1, which is bound to two oxygens, completely oxidized, has no more purpose. So the electrons from this one oxygen kick down onto the C. O to make a double bond and basically kicks itself off by pu picking, pu pu putting those electrons onto the carbon to, of the former pyruvate. And again, similarly to up here, we can maintain this negative charge on this carbon because of the balance it receives from the electron sink properties of the thiazolium ring. So TPP has done its, its purpose. It, is oxid it has removed carbon dioxide, the first carbon from this molecule, allowing us to have our acetyl group, which we can then transfer onto enzyme complex 2 to attach our coenzyme A. And it does this with this carb anion attacking and breaking up this disulfide bond on lipoamide. The one sulfur group gets bound to our carbon and our TTP, TPP temporarily. And um, the other sulfur picks up a hydrogen from solution, leaving us with this step where we have our E2 and E1 complex bound through this acetyl group intermediate.
And so basically we're going to kick off E1 from our acetyl group and E2 complex. And we do this by dislodging this hydrogen-oxygen bond onto the carbon-oxygen and then kicking these electrons from this bond between the acetyl group and the TPP back onto this carbon here, reforming the carbon ion. So we just basically reformed our, T, our functional TPP so it can go about other mechanisms. And what we have now is our enzyme, our E2, with its um, lipoic lipoamide or lipoic acid is bound through our sulfur group to this acetyl group. So now we can move on to the E2 reaction mechanism. This is where we attach coenzyme A. And this um, sulfur is extremely nucleophilic. It wants to bond, it wants to create bonds to electrophiles such as this carbonyl group. Are we seeing a pattern here? Carbonyls are very electrophilic. They are very open for attack. We've seen that a lot of times, not only just in the E1 mechanism and this E2 mechanism, but also a lot in glycolysis as well. So this so the lone pair on the sulfur attacks the carbonyl carbon, and we push off these, these electrons from the CS bond onto sulfur, which can pick up a hydrogen, leaving us with fully reduced lipoamide and acetyl-CoA. Great, we formed our acetyl-CoA. We're done with this aspect. Acetyl-CoA is formed. Great, that's all we wanted to do is convert pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. But the problem is we have this fully reduced lipo lipoamide. And in order to, for lip lipoamide to be able to reactive again, we have to reoxidize it. Because right now it's in its fully reduced form. And we do this by picking these electrons off using an electron carrier, and that's going to come from E3. E3 has FAD plus bound to it. It's going to pick up these electrons from the sulfurs, forming FADH2. So now we have reoxidized our lipoamide, and it can now react again with our TBP acetyl, co our acetyl, um, acetyl group from our E1 mechanism. And lastly, FADH bound to E3 transfers its electrons onto NADH because FADH is bound permanently to this enzyme complex. It cannot deposit the electrons anywhere, but a free floating NADH can pick up these electrons through a redox reaction and use it elsewhere for um, synthesis of other molecules or could contribute it towards the electrochemical gradient needed in the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. But now we have regenerated our FAD plus bound to E3. So we have regenerated our lipoamide, our FAD plus. and also our TPP in E1 mechanism. And of course, we have created our acetyl-CoA needed for the citric acid cycle. All right, so that is the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. I wanted to give that in its own video just because of the reaction me mechanism is intricate, it's unique, and it's very interesting. Um, next video will be the citric acid cycle as we move, keep moving through um, aerobic respiration. So we'll see you next time.